Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Miguel Duarte. I'm here with uh, my colleague uh, Daniel Mellado. We both work for uh, Red Hat. I work in the OpenShift uh, virtualization networking team and he works for OpenShift monitoring. So we're here to present a talk, a talk titled uh, Mayday, CNI Overboard. This will make sense in a few minutes, I hope. So first thing we'll do is explain a little bit uh, what is the current state of the CNI project and what actually led us to care about this. Then we'll uh, introduce um, CNI and Maltus for us to get like a total understanding of, um, let's say, of the lingo and be able to properly specify the problem. From there, we'll enter a new uh, Kubernetes enhancement proposal about multi-networking and uh, go to uh, the upcoming uh, CNI release. Well, this is not an upcoming CNI release because right now it's just like a set of um, requests for enhancements. Like there's just a, a list of issues. That is something that is on scope to be worked on CNI 2.0, but it's very important. And then we'll finalize with um, what we've learned and uh, where we see this going forward. So the first thing we should spend a little time to, um, to discuss is the relationship between CNI and, and Kubernetes. So for that, first thing is Kubernetes networking model is something extremely simple because it basically just says that every workload, every pod, gets a single interface in it with an IP address and every pod, independently of where it is scheduled, will be able to communicate with any other pod in the system through that single in, uh, IP on that interface. Um, that interface is created and configured by CNI, which stands for Container Networking Interface. Now, you look at this like that, you get the impression that these two things are actually like bound together in a way. The reality is this thing in the middle actually does not exist. And what you do have is that Kubernetes understands something called CRI, which is the runtime interface, and this thing actually speaks to CNI. What this means is that there is no way for CNI to actually communicate to Kubernetes in any sort of way, nor Kubernetes knows anything about CNI. It really does not know it even exists. Um, on top of that, another thing that is missing from here is, so let's say that your workload, for whatever reason, it actually like, requires more than one interface. Like you have one, Kubernetes gives you that, it manages. Uh, manages it, but uh, it just gives you one. What if you need more than one? So for that, we've pre well, we didn't create, but there's a project called Multus that d is responsible for that. It, uh, its value proposition is that enables the pod to have multiple um, networking interfaces. On top of that, this Multus thing actually understands Kubernetes. It speaks its API, and it actually speaks also with the CNI API, which we'll see later on exactly what it is. But yeah, so we have Maltus that uh, is responsible for these two things. It speaks Kubernetes and it grants a pod the ability of having multiple interfaces. These multiple interfaces might not be uh, only a virtualized interface. Sometimes you actually need to uh, tap into like a physical host interface, like for instance, uh, SREOV, you might need that. And for that, you need to add more stuff into the, the picture. Like, you need to use a device plugin, you need to use a thing, a SRUV network operator, which requires Maltus, by the way, to be able to get your pod, your workload, an SRUV interface. Like, the picture is getting like more and more complex, depending on your use case. Like, the more things you need, the worse the picture becomes, and the complexity increases. And this is what we have um, today like all these things. And there are certain, there are new initiatives coming up, like for instance right now, this uh, DRA, Dynamic Resource um, it Assignment, this thing got uh, merged on, I think it's alpha for uh, Kubernetes 1.26 or 27. And now what we have is a new uh, emerging community enhancement proposal, community, no, Kubernetes enhancement proposal for native multi-networking. And this is what we'll focus on later on this presentation. Said all this, so I'll hand this over to Dr. OK, 
Can you hear me just fine? OK. So Miguel introduces us to what, a little bit about what's CNI, uh, what's current status, what is evolution. But I just want to go ahead and go a little bit more on, on that. So first of all, CNI, uh, it's basically Everybody thinks that it's basically Kubernetes networking, so we got all the plugins, but there's so much more to that. So I don't know uh, if you have ever wondered why if this is Kubernetes, why a CNA plugin doesn't have, let's say, a native config. In, in case you don't know, it config is on JSON, so you may be wondering why JSON and not YAML, and why not a CRD, and even more, what, why there's no daemon. So currently, uh, this is just a quick overview about what's going on in a Kubernetes node when we are just having all the components over there. So currently, a CNA plugin, in the end, it's just a binary, which speaks JSON, and it's a binary that is being run by the kubelet or the container runtime, uh, CRI, or that's what was Miguel was saying before. What do we want of that? In the end, we just want a network namespace with an interface or more, but we'll get to that. But uh, in case you're familiar with any another projects of virtualization infrastructure whatsoever, for instance, let's compare that to OpenStack. In case you're familiar with OpenStack, such as I know a lot of people here are, uh, you can just get a VM with whatever amount of subnet and interfaces you'd like to, but you can't do that natively in Kubernetes. Uh, so yes, just recalling that, it's, this is a binary, which is installed by a daemon set, so that means that you got a copy of the binary in every node of your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, in the same way, it has a CNI plugin path, which stands for, okay, where the hell is my config? So when you get the binary, it, it's gonna be looking for a config file, a JSON file with the same name as the binary itself, with the full, and we'll be seeing some examples later on. What is, what is the CNI spec? So, so far you know that CNI, um, okay, it's a, is it a plugin? It is a protocol, it's an API. So in the end, it's just a specification. And it allows you to use four primitives that are CNI add, del, sec, and version. And even more, out of those two, of those four, most of the CNI plugins that you'll see around only implements two of those, which is CNI add and del. That means, okay, give me a port, oh, okay, delete that. And there's some complexity out of that, because uh, as I was mentioning before, this is not a daemon. So all the implementation gets down to the CNI plugin writer. So if you want to have, uh, I don't know, a controller out of that, okay, go ahead and implement that. The CNI spec, it's totally okay, and it only expects to read some uh, JSON config file, some env bars from the system, and it will just execute the binary and give you a result. So I think it's worth just taking a quick look about this. So you got a couple of environment bars here. CNI command, okay, what the hell am I running? I'm, I'm speaking about like these CNI add and del commands. And then I need to basically which network namespace I'm, I'm gonna be using, which interface name. Recall, there's gonna be only one, just like the Highlanders, but you know, there's more than that. And then the container ID. And if you see, again, here, like on, you know, I can't point out, but it's over here. Like uh, this is just, um, some kind of JSON in which you have the CNI version. Depending on the version that you're using, you may have some limitations, but I won't get there unless somebody you know, specifically asks for that. And you get your CNI plugin name and the type, and then uh, you can do whatever you want to. Uh, once it's there, it's gonna be executed, and it'll give you an out. Um, if you have been to some other sessions, you may have been also hearing about the purpose results, and that's because you can also, yeah, do CNI plugin chaining, which means that you can put several of those in, in a pipeline. And basically, if everything goes well, you get an exit code, you get zero, everything goes well, okay, go on. And then goes Multus. Uh, what's the problem here? I've been speaking about that we only got one single interface per pod. That's an acute limitation, especially if you are uh, working with some telco environments, because the most basic telco workload is gonna be a firewall. And how do you do a firewall if you only got one single interface? Good luck. So Multus is a project which aims to be some kind of meta plugin, and it handles, uh, well, first of all, uh, it handles several interfaces over there, and it's gonna be, first of all, allowing you to use a CRD. Okay, hey, 
finally, this starts to look like some Kubernetes native. But don't get me wrong. In the end, this CRD, uh, it, come, it uses an object in Kubernetes called Network Attachment Definition. But hey, it's going to be just a wrapper for this old style JSON. This is something that we would like to change in the upcoming CNI 2.0. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll get that for later. So for now, what I want you, for you, if you get anything out of this, is that, first of all, Kubernetes native only allows you a single interface per pod. Use multiples, you got several. So this is a quick example of this. Uh, so you got a, let's use Flannel, but I, I, don't, I don't really care about this, uh, which plugin we are using. You can use any plugin for the community, uh, Flannel, uh, OBN Kubernetes, whatever you like to. But um, most of the using Multus, um, you get another, if you see here, another Net0 interface, Net1, NetN. So you have several of those. And thus we can start doing something which is pretty much more interesting. So what are the pros about the current approach in CNI? So first of all, it's super simple. Basically, even if I stated that there are four primitives, basically I don't give a damn about anything but two. So I want to create a, a port, I want to delete a port, and well, check and version are interesting, are cool, so you know which version I'm using about the plugin. But um, you know, um, if you see, I don't know, let's go and check some um, fancy CNI plugin, if I recall correctly, so if you will go and do a git blame, you may get me wrong, but um, uh, Cilium doesn't even have CNI check implemented, so that's just nothing, you know, like uh, nothing fancy. But again, so this is no daemon, so any developer should have to reinvent the wheel and create their own reconciled loop for any CNI plugin, which kind of sucks, because why would you like to you know, reinvent the wheel for every CNI plugin? Um, and also, uh, for the same reason, uh, its life cycle is somehow limited because it's a oh, you got one CNI add, it, gives you, it doesn't give you an act, it just gets you a result. So what happens if you fail for deleting something? You may be leaking resources and you may even not knowing that unless you implement your own solution or your CNI plugin. And also, CNI, to be honest, although I think it's a super cool project, the community is getting somehow smaller, which is really bad, so feel free to go join up and contribute if you want to. Uh, we are totally happy to you know, get patches, pull requests, docs, comments, whatever. So uh, really pleased to so, uh, take a look at cni.dev. Um, the thing is that uh, its docs could be really enhanced. Again, pull request accepted. And also, there's Podman is also somehow replacing that with some newer implementation. And as you were seeing in the original diagrams that Miguel was showing, is not really Kubernetes native. You may say, why? But you are saying that it's a CNI, container native interf network interface, and what? But this is because originally CNI was meant to be used with Rocket, which some of you may know. It was a container interface available to some of the other implementations you, that we have. So it's like it goes a long way backwards, and it's not really that native. Why haven't you just migrated that, that to YAML and proper CR CRDs? Uh, well, it just evolved that way, so uh, we plan to change that. We are coming a new specs in I2O. The cool thing is that it's super simple. Uh, what happened here? Uh, okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. So what's the deal here? As I was saying, um, this is super simple, just four different primitives. Uh, it's totally simple to do a CNI plugin in a scale there's even some examples on that. Um, if you go to my GitHub and you say the kubecon CNI, you, may, you, can, you can just see that I wrote an example CNI plugin for the kubecon in Valencia, and it does nothing, but just fork it, and it allows you to get a fully working CNI plugin for your own. But also it has some limitations, and in the end it's just a two trick, let's say, pony, which is add, del, and that's it. Uh, so far, and now I'm going to be getting back to Miguel because I want for him to highlight you a little bit of some things about theirs. Currently, it's a CAP, which is a Kubernetes enhancement proposal, which is ongoing about, okay, let's make this really uh, Kubernetes native and how, so we would like to use CRDs, we would like to use objects. Um, there's a caveat to this, though, because the current proposal aims to be implementation agnostic, so that means it could evolve in a way that would totally ignore the current CNI ecosystem, let's say. 
uh, we would like at least CNI man maintainers and CNI um, developers would like to avoid that because we would like to see that it's backwards compatible and it works fully. So CNI gets evolved rather than you know substitute. And also this may lead to, if some of you guys are working on support, if this goes on, we'll like try and do some migration path anyway. So I'll let Miguel go ahead and explain you a little bit about the, uh, this proposal, but we'll get back to you later with some Q&A. All right, um, okay, next slide. So I'm going to um, explain the current state of, the, of this uh, Kubernetes enhancement proposal for multi-networking. So the first thing about it, it's being split into three different proposals, actually. Like the first focuses exclusively on use cases. It's a quite thorough list of use cases that um, actually takes into account lots of things that we think are missing from the original specification. Like it, it has as use cases stuff like uh, hardware devices, it's mentioned there, a uh, hot plug into the pod, basically like this means that you'd have to react and actually introduce a new interface to a running pod. This is something that uh, is not very Kubernetes, but there are use cases that require it. Um, then the second one is about defining the API. So it's quite, it's like the one we are currently on. And finally, it would be a final cap that would basically introduce these code changes. Uh, as Daniel said before, uh, this will be implementation agnostic. So every time in these discussions that you ask for something specific, like you want to, for instance, plug some runtime information from, the, um, from a pod. So a pod requests a particular IP or a pod requests like a particular MAC address. So the, the reply usually is that is implementation agnostic. Like uh, we might not care about that and we are providing one uh, single implementation and uh, it seems to be a little bit cloud focused. But on the good side, if you look at this, there are a lot of things you'll get for free. Like you get a Kubernetes native way to interact with the network plugin. You'll get a Kubernetes, an entry Kubernetes native way to have multiple interfaces on your workload. So this means like all the entire ecosystem that I've shown in the beginning with multis and all that, like half of that is actually not required. You have stuff like dynamic interfaces are featured in the community enhancement proposal. Hardware-based uh, devices are also uh, mentioned as an objective, which pretty much will simplify the, the original like uh, diagram by a lot. Like half of those uh, balls will disappear, which will simplify by a lot the complexity of the solution. And finally, you get a native integration with uh, things like network policies and service with services, which are, of course, also part and native to Kubernetes. Uh, and I would just like for you to take a look at, so here in the left, this is what the multi-CRD looks like. So you just, oops, you just give it, you just give it um, a YAML with a packed JSON thing in it where you can put pretty much everything you want. So if you forget to put a comma here, this thing will not work. Like it's JSON packed within a YAML, it really looks bad, it's error prone, and it's uh, hard to get right. While to the right, what you actually have is uh, YAML, simple, like it's very easy to understand and uh, obviously to get right. Now, another thing that happens nowadays with CNI is whenever you have to address one of its shortcomings, like for instance, reconcile a resource. Like, if you, if you are an IPAM plugin, you manage IP addresses, you need to reconcile those IP addresses. This is done at the, on a case by case, um, that is done case by case. So every plugin that you have will need to be able to do that. If you want to have dynamic interfaces, you will need to find another way for that. So for instance, what we did was to create a controller that looks 
at the uh, annotations of the pod, sees an annotation change, it computes like the delta between the interfaces it has now, the interfaces that you want to have, and will then like either add or remove interfaces. So we had a new controller, we had to redesign Maltus in order to be able to receive more inputs. So it's like a huge amount of work whenever you need to CNI to do something it was not built to do. Again, the one trick pony knows one thing. This one actually knows two, but uh, that's what it does. For instance, for Slack, there's no way for you to do this like natively. And there are people that are after these things. Now, not everything is bad. You have the upcoming uh, CNI 2.0, like as I said in the beginning, all you have is like a list of issues, but you can opinionate on them. You can say uh, what's your opinion. You can try to raise their priority, but there are lots of things that are being considered right now that will make this easier and better. So it is considering demonization. So instead of it being like a binary file just on a host file system that will be invoked, it will be run in a pod that is managed by a daemon set. That's a lot better. It helps you to have another life cycle, life cycle methods. It will be easier to deploy. And of course, it's Kubernetes native. You'll get an enhanced life cycle. So there's a particular issue for this. And the most important thing here is they're planning on adding a garbage collection verb. So instead of you having to write a controller to reconcile your IP addresses, for instance, you know, you'll have a verb in CNI that will actually do that for you. So it will simplify your life quite a lot. Again, this is just like an idea right now, and it's being planned. Another thing, plugin events. So this is actually a way for CNI to feed back information into, the, into Kubernetes. So for instance, let's say that CNI actually sees that your pod got a new IP because of Slack. So it will introduce that new IP address to Kubelet. And finally, also device interactions. Okay, as conclusions, uh, what we have right now is that this uh, multi-networking uh, enhancement proposal is very strong in terms of use cases. It basically addresses like all the current limitations of CNI, at least as we see it, and it kind of uh, addresses the entire Maltus feature set. So hardware devices, it speaks, uh, it is native to to Kubernetes, and it allows you to add more than one interface. Come on, its name, it's multi-network. All of this put together makes that, well, CNI 2.0 better be good. It has like one chance to do things right, or it will actually uh, probably become extinct, or at least that's what we are concerned about. And uh, well, you can help, like uh, you could give feedback to the existing issues, like if you think that you as a CNI developer could get something, like your life could be easier in any way, just comment, like ask for it, and it will probably be like taken into account quite for sure. And uh, yeah, we have no doubt that this is where we are. Like Kubernetes users will go on and live a long, happy life, but CNI is freezing in the water and probably, like it will probably die. The fun thing is that probably there's room for everyone and they can still fit together and uh, find a way to be happy. And yeah, thank you. Any questions? <coughs> oh, that's very important. So there's, there's a weekly meeting about um, bi-weekly, so like twice per month. Uh, of this uh, multi-network community and uh, Kubernetes enhancement proposal. And uh, all the caps are online. You can look at them, comment. So welcome to do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you have any questions, like uh, now's your time. And if not, well, thank you for your time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No. Totally true.
like um, oh I need to repeat the the question uh, well it was very 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 long and uh, <laughs> I I'm really sorry I would really hope that we could kind of make this a little bit more uh, interactive because there's one thing that I notice that if you ask me that question it's because I did not explain this properly I'm not saying that this cap has anything to do with uh, CNI 2.0 those are two different things um, CNI 2.0 is on one track, it is trying to do something, and at the same time this thing is trying to do kind of what these guys are also doing, but in a native way, and they're, they're trying to specify it. So, both of these entities are trying to address the shortcomings of what you have right now, right? And one of them is native, and the other one is like uh, an improvement over what you have nowadays. So, um, would you like to rephrase your question with this in mind? Like, I'm not saying that the, the cap is about CNI 2.0, because they're really not. Yeah, so, so now my long, long question becomes too short question. So, Better. first of all, I take from your presentation, like, you are on the side of CNI 2.0, guys. Having said this, aren't you scared of the multi-net cap? Uh, yeah, the kind of the, so the, the question is if we are scared of the multi-net cap as someone that looks like we are a pro CNI 2.0. <laughs> so the thing is, I think there's room for everyone involved. Like, uh, first of, I really think like all the advantages that you get on this cap, like th those are real and that's the real way to do things forward. Now. What we want to have is a CNI 2.0 um, way of keep being relevant. We still think it can still be relevant even if this thing enters. Because like, part of its problem is also part of this multi-net cap uh, power is also its weakness or the other way around. Like it's implementation agnostic. Like it can be just a wrapper over the existing CNI or it can be something totally different and replace it or ignore it somehow. Yeah, you can just combine them, which is be a wrapper or combine. What there's plenty of ways this could go. Okay, so now second. Wow. So the um, the question is. This uh, multi-network cap, it sounds like it is, could it be ambitious enough and traumatic enough to the existing code base that you would actually need to bump a major release of Kubernetes? And the question is, I really don't know. <laughs> it might, I don't, I, in the meetings we've been, that was never uh, addressed that I remember. No, not at all. Not at all. Again, like the as far as under, like the the way that you configure the default network, actually, not I think a little bit about it, the answer is no. Like because Kubernetes only cares about one interface, right? That thing will be configured the same way. This thing will just give you the ability of adding more things to it, so you can preserve exactly what you have today. I guess that eventually they will instead of have they will adopt the common or the pod default network as one of these multi-networks. I guess that's the overall direction they're going, and once that happens, it might make sense to do what you're saying. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Yep. Um, what about hardware devices? Uh, is the new cap still going to Kubernetes device? Uh, Plugins. So, Ticket? Okay. I really don't know. Device plugins, or if they're still device plugins, if they, so they still make sense, how can they communicate? Yeah. So the, the question is if in this cap, does it still make, uh, will the, devi the hardware devices still be, um, will it still use device plugin to actually grant the pod access to the physical network device? So we really don't know, but the thing, because that is only really listed on the um, on the use cases. This is a work in progress. 
Yeah. 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 Instruct the CNI plugin uh, of which device it allocated. Well, probably this implementation agnostic thing will have to do something quite similar, but we really do not know. It's a use case only. It's listed as a use case, so it'll probably address it when, by whom, we don't know. All right, so, well, thanks for your time. <laughs>